Ahem. This just in. Voiceover tips from AVS and ProVoiceOverTraining.com. Private coaches and instructors. In this video, I want to give you a range of quick tips, and joining me, other working pros, some of our private coaches and instructors. Hey, I'm Mike, co-owner of the Atlanta VoiceOver Studio and ProVoiceOverTraining.com. Our goal is to equip, elevate, and inspire you in your VO career. Getting right into the VO tips, from the first person to team up with a studio when we first started out, Brian Bremer. Like Heidi and I, Brian is a veteran voiceover talent and on-camera actor who's been at this longer than he likes to admit. And he is so creative and funny and just an overall great guy. He also teaches our intro to VO and intro to animation workshops here at Atlanta VoiceOver Studio, either live in person or via Zoom or on demand at ProVoiceOverTraining.com. And to add to the list, he's also one of our private coaches at the studio. <clears throat> Side note, he's also been in a ton of horror movies like the oldie but a goodie, Pumpkinhead, where he played a character named Bunt. Ah, classic. As voice talent, we and you work so hard training and auditioning. Then you get that email that says, you're booked. So exciting. But you may think to yourself, oh boy, what if I mess up? What, what will I be able to deliver? Uh, we, you know, the nerves start coming in. We've all experienced those fears and those nerves and the jitters. You're not alone. It's okay. It's natural. Here's Brian's advice on when you book something, especially if you're just starting out. Remain optimistic flexible, and be the best talent you can be. What I've discovered 20 years in, and I still learn this lesson every day, is that it's just as important in sessions to remain optimistic and flexible as it is to be the very best talent you can be in that moment. You'll have clients that are great, most clients are wonderful, and then some that are all business, you can't take that personally, and then you'll have some that are downright difficult <laughs> because they're busy, and you can't take that personally either, they're just busy. But learning not to take that personally and understand where they're coming from, as in read the room, even when they're not there in person, but connected via Zoom or Source Connect, and being a pro is really important. It's rarely about you, if ever, if you've done your prep and are ready to roll. At the same time, you can experience things like differences in opinions about your performance from client team members, multiple directions that seem to conflict, and having to re-audition for campaigns and clients you've voiced and worked for years. You may walk into a session expecting to read one thing and be given something totally different, or more or less than you expected. Don't be scared. All you have to do is know that you're as prepared as you can be, stay positive, and go with the flow. If you walk out saying, thank you so much for having me, please reach out if you need anything else, then you're good to go, then head to Dairy Queen for a treat. If you remember this, which we all have to remind ourselves of no matter where we are in our career, you'll eliminate leaving the session feeling like you failed to accomplish, but rather that you did your best and learned. Stay confident in where you are now and in your continued growth. After Heidi and I wrote the beginner voiceover intensive manual for the class we began leading, after a few months, we decided, why not open up another class? Veteran voiceover talent Jill Perry volunteered and she's been with us ever since. She's also one of our private coaches at Atlanta Voiceover Studio. Here she is with a tip you may not have thought about. So get control of your breath. So what I want to tell you to do is get some really hardcore exercise going a couple of hours before you have a live session. Why? Because your fight or flight response is going to kick in. You're going to get nervous. Everybody gets nervous, whether you've had 20 years on stage or no time on stage, right? You get up to the mic, you're in there, you put the headphones on, you know somebody else is listening and then they're gonna tell you what they want from you. Well, you start stumbling over a script you thought you had down pat. You're stumbling over words that should be super easy. And then your brain starts to explode like fireworks and you get confused, why? Because you're not breathing. Yeah, it's called breath dumping, when you just, <laughs> you take a really big breath and let it all out, and then there's nothing left. And your brain is scrambling for oxygen. So go for a walk, go for a run, go swimming, go roller skating, have a relay race with yourself, or just dance across your living room like I do, and wear yourself out. Then when you get into the booth a couple of hours later, you're gonna feel more confident, you're gonna have more fun, you're gonna be ready to listen to what that director truly wants, and you're gonna translate that into your own voice and the way that you do it like nobody else can right there at the mic. Your nerves may still come into play, that's okay. Everybody knows that performance is an art form. It's personal and it's different every single time you do it. But if you can get yourself aerobically challenged and in the habit of coming up to speed every day and then coming back down to a nice 
level where you can control most of what's happening in your heart rate and your respiratory rate, you're gonna feel a lot better when you're standing up to the mic. Even in those moments where you're uncomfortable or uncertain, or you don't quite understand the direction that's being given, and you're still expected to perform in the next 30 seconds, it's gonna be really comforting. So start working out before you step up to the mic so that you have the best breath control you can. This is just one more little tip from Atlanta VoiceOver Studio, where we love to help you understand the best way to meet your dream face-to-face. -face. <laughs> have a great day. As VO talent, we love hearing voices and listening to demos and just paying attention to the uniqueness in each person's voice. Our next instructor has such a cool sound too. Aaron Goodson is another veteran voiceover talent and he's got a background in acting. He's classically trained, having studied at NYU's Tisch School of the Arts and the Royal Academy of Dramatic Arts, so he knows a thing or two. He's voiced for Sprite, AT&T, Under Armour, the NBA, the list is as long as my arm and probably longer. But he's also a fantastic instructor and he knows quite a bit. He teaches another one of our beginner voiceover intensive classes in addition to being one of our private coaches. Here he is with his tip. Something that took me a while to learn was to learn to love the audition process. Not to look at it like a chore or a job, but to look at it like play. An opportunity to explore, to have fun, to allow the uniqueness of me and who I am to come through each and every time I turned on that microphone. And whether I booked the job or not is irrelevant. It's about having fun and playing and not letting myself be dictated by fear. I think my journey took longer than it needed to because I allowed myself to be fearful of those things that were outside of my control. And the more that you can have confidence in who you are and the choices that you make, you can push aside that fear because you're only concerned about the things that you have control over, which is having fun and being you. So enjoy your journey and good luck. Because new talent and even talent who've been at this for a while often realize they never really learned the foundations of VO, our beginner voiceover intensive class sells out really quickly. And when it was time to add another class, we were so thankful to have Trevor Johns. She hopped on board. Trevor decided to join us and hasn't looked back. And I'm pretty sure that Jill Perry helped convince her that she'd love it and would be so good at it. She did, she is. And now Trevor is also a private coach. And this tip from Trevor is a huge one. My VO tip for you is that once you get an agent, congratulations, you can't just sit back and wait for the agent to contact you. They'll start sending you auditions, sure, but you need to build that relationship. You need to let them know things about you, some personal things. You don't want to call them and have an hour conversation every day. Who's got time for that? Nobody. But what you want to do is just communicate with them, okay? So if you've taken a great workshop over the weekend, let them know that you took this great workshop. Let them know that you are aware that you're part of a team with them now and that you guys are working together for the better of your career and for the betterment of the agency as well because you're top talent and the agency will be known for top talent like you. So you want to represent yourself in that fashion, okay? So call your agent once in a while just like your mother. Call your mother once in a while too. And I'm just gonna add another fun fact since I know her. She used to do stand-up comedy and she really is hilarious. Never a dull moment. Sally Neal is one of our instructors and coaches and her background, well, 30 years, she was a voiceover agent, so you know she's got a ton of knowledge and experience. Sally teaches our agent representation prep class to help you get ready as you seek representation and what agents expect. Here's some bite-sized advice she has for you. Sally says, seek, dig, and discover your true voice, the one you use when talking to yourself. Be directable. And that's good advice because nowadays, the specs we see in the majority of our auditions are real and natural and an everyday person. And Steve Henderson's character review class focuses on just that. Now, if you wanna prep and be equipped to procure an agent representation, you can check out Sally's class on the site and join in person if you're in Atlanta or via Zoom. <sighs> I can't wait till we can get puppies again. I miss my puppy. Okay, I'm focused. Now, I just mentioned Steve, so let's hear from him next. Today, I wanna to talk about something that we all need to give ourselves. It's permission. Have you ever really thought about that? Think about what happens in the booth 
We step in here and we see the copy. The problem is when we see that copy and it's someone else's words, we're more worried about how we sound rather than the message that we're trying to convey. A lot of that happens because of the person outside of the glass here. We want to please them so badly because frankly, we want to be asked back. But the problem is when it comes to emotions and how we interpret them and all that kind of stuff, we don't know that person out there. We have no idea what happy or sad or mad means to them. But we do know what it means to us. And if we can think about that and give ourselves permission to tap into it, you're going to find your reads come across much more realistic, much more genuine, and much more authentic. It also is going to help when you try to pick that person out that you're talking to as far as just saying the message to them instead of speaking at them. Give yourself permission today. You're going to find that it helps out your reads quite a bit. And we talk about other permission points in my class, The Character of You. I hope to see you in there someday. We'll see you soon. So don't ask permission. Challenge accepted. I'm going to prank him in his booth one day. We have another instructor for the beginner voiceover intensive. This one's strictly via Zoom, and our coach and instructor is Dan Fishman. This is the only fully online class we've done, and it's turned out fantastic for people who just can't make it here in person. And you can be wherever and take the class and get those foundations. Side note, we've made an on-demand version of the beginner voiceover intensive that you can go through at your own pace, and it's with me and Heidi at provoiceovertraining.com. Dan has been a musician for most of his life, basically, and he's also an engineer, an on-camera actor, as well as a voice actor. And his tip for today deals with another aspect we talent have to pay attention to. Pronunciations can be tricky, especially when you're dealing with regional spots or with names. So if you have time before the session, or even if you have just a few moments when the session begins and you've just gotten the script, scan the script and look for any words that you're not sure about. You can look them up on plenty of resources online, especially one called howjasay.com, which is spelled H-O-W-J-S-A-Y.com, howjasay.com, and a very nice British gentleman will um, read all of the pronunciations for you and even give you sometimes different dialects in different parts of the world. But as a bare minimum, if there's any words on there like, say, homogenous, which can also be pronounced homogeneous, or data, which can also be pronounced data, or either and either. So when you run into a word like that, go through and get familiar with all of the different pronunciation options so that when the client tells you which one they want to use, you're already prepared and you can switch and change. Important note to remember, if you use data versus data, just make sure you use the same pronunciation from the top of the script until the end. So that way you can stay consistent. But thanks so much and I hope that helps. I can't thumbs up this tip enough. Recently, I had an audition for a restaurant located up north, and I wasn't sure of how to pronounce the restaurant name, so I couldn't find it anywhere online. So I just called the restaurant and found out right away how to say it. And even if they were closed, they most likely would have had an answering message that said the name. This comes in handy for finding out about names of cities or counties or lakes, stuff like that. When you get those regional auditions and have no clue how to say a name, even the most straightforward of places may have a little nuance to them. Is it Lancaster? or Lancaster. Since I'm from PA, I always default to Lancaster, in case you care to have that piece of info crammed in your noggin. And I don't know what it is, but I kind of like calling places to see how the locals say it, complete with accent and all. The great thing about that is that if you know how to pronounce things like the locals, the regional clients tend to trust you more, or at least it seems that way. At the very least, it shows that you've cared enough to find out, and it might just help you stand out if and when other talent don't say something correctly. And it shows that you went the extra mile to do your homework. James Younger, a resident audio doctor leads our Learn Adobe Audition and Learn Audacity classes at the Atlanta VoiceOver Studio and on demand at ProVoiceOverTraining.com. He's our home studio whiz and has a great ear to figure out what's going on in your studio. Here he is with a tip about... <clears throat> and he's also the one who puts all these videos together as if you couldn't tell. Hey, can somebody check with Hunter to see if the fire extinguishers are up to code? 
never a dull moment. All right, so I'm gonna try and keep this quick, but my tip for voice actors is, don't worry so much about the microphone. Most voice actors, especially in the beginning, they think the microphone's going to make or break their career, and it's it's just not. 70 to 80% of having professional sounding audio is how you acoustically treat the space that you're recording in. Okay, so if you have $1,000, I would spend $800 of that on how you acoustically treat the space you're in, and $200 on a microphone. So, that's my tip. Oh, and one last thing, you know what they say. Marconi probably never imagined how the radio would be used and what would be coming across the radio waves, especially today. But radio imaging is huge and lucrative when you get on with enough stations. Our next ABS private coach is Adam Schneider, a rock star in the radio imaging world. Adam says, remember that in radio imaging, to be truly successful, you're not just a voice talent, but you're also a writing partner. While reading the copy, if you happen to think of a better way to phrase something, do it. Radio imaging is more about voicing things how people normally say them rather than proper English. Don't hesitate to give out takes as well. Oftentimes, the crazier or funnier, the better. That stuff will usually make it in a promo and the producer will love you for it. And that reminds me, it's a good time to mention that if you're not comfy with adding or ad-libbing, make sure that you take improv classes. That'll get you out of your comfort zone and get you thinking creatively really quickly. If you're interested in radio imaging, Adam coaches, so check him out on the site. His is a more specialized field, so it definitely takes knowing how to take direction, but it is so much fun. To the ladies, Julie Scher and Casey Holloway lead our Intro to Kids voiceover and animation workshops at the Atlanta VoiceOver Studio, and they're up next. First up, Julie's talking copy. Talking copy. Julie's talking copy. Copy, copy, copy that. <clears throat> hey there, this is Julie Scher. I'm here to provide you with some cool tips and tricks for your voice acting voiceover journey. Now, the first thing is, what is the copy trying to say? What's the message? Once you know that, it will really help with how you deliver the words. Number two, who are you talking to specifically? And when I say specific, I mean someone in your world, someone whom you know personally. The more personal, the more conversational, the more the script will resonate with you. How will you make it conversational? Well, find a good lead-in with trigger words like, you know, mom, there's all sorts of ways that you can lead into that first line of copy to get you into that conversational tone. And what I like to say, it's kind of like a running start. There are, of course, so many more things to do with the script before you go ahead and record it. But I would say that these are the biggest things that you need to do every single time you get a new script. Bottom line is, though, have fun, relax, breathe, and smile. When you smile, people can hear the smile. Let me give you an example. Hi, this is Julie Cher. Hi, this is Julie Cher. Which one was the smile, hmm? <laughs> Ciao. That's a great little tip to remember as you step into the booth, whether you're a kiddo or an adult. And remember to have your pets spayed and neutered. Now, Casey also gave us a tip about something many talent don't often think about, but agents know how important this can be. So this is just a tiny little tip for slating your auditions, which I think gets overlooked a lot. So one of the things that is great to do when you're slating an audition is to slate in a way that is reflective of the character you're about to record in your audition. So if the specs are saying this character has a little bit of an attitude and maybe has a lower pitch, then I'm going to try and incorporate those specs in into my slate. So for example, let's say I was given those specs, attitude with maybe a lower pitch. So my slate might sound like this, Casey Holloway. And then let's say I was given peppy and quirky and upbeat, my slate might sound like Casey Holloway. This is in no way an exact science. It's just another way to catch their attention right off the bat. That's it, and happy slating. Now, Casey was talking specifically for animation auditions, but this also applies for commercial auditions. If you have a commercial audition and it's supposed to be bright and peppy, but you slate with low energy, hey, I'm Mike Stout, it can turn them off immediately. Casting directors don't have time to sit through hundreds of auditions, and if you're not giving them a flavor of what to expect, they're quick to just move on. Typically, in case you've not heard this, CDs often make their opinion in three seconds. 
That means they sometimes don't even make it past the name slate. It's little things like this can make a big difference. Next up is Thessaly Lerner. We've tapped Thessaly to teach our advanced animation workshops occasionally, and she's a phenomenal talent. She's a voice actor, a producer, a casting director, and director. And the creativity does not stop with her. She's amazing. She has several recurring clients, including DreamWorks TV and Pocket Gems Mobile Games, and she's always doing something. She's got so much energy. Use your thighs, squeeze your butt. And her 13 episode animated show, Astrid Strudelman, The Unicorn Whisperer, has been moved from Amazon Prime regular to an all DreamWorks TV Amazon Prime channel. Here is her piece of advice for you. Fire tornado, tornado's on fire. Fire tornado, oh, oh, oh. Fire tornado, tornado's on fire. Werewolf and unicorn, two unlikely friends. Two. If you want to get some great animation coaching, email admin at atlantavoiceoverstudio.com to get in touch with Thessaly. I really hope you enjoyed all these tips from some of the instructors, coaches, and workshop leaders, and that you can put some of these to work in your daily VO life. If you have any questions or requests, leave a comment below. Until next time, get after it. Not sure if you know this, but if you ever want to train with a professional, you can always go to atlantavoiceoverstudio.com and click on private coaches in the menu. Yeah, we have a full list of coaches who will meet up with you live on Zoom and help you work on whatever you need. Whether you're trying to master the conversational natural read, you want to practice bringing a script to life as opposed to just reading it. Or if you'd like to make sure that your home studio is set up properly, we have a private coach for that. We're here to help you on your VO journey.